Hi, my name is William Schaefer, and I have a book review today, Galileo by Stillman Drake. A number of years ago, Barnes & Nobles published a series of these small books, um, A Brief Insight. The series is called A Brief Insight, and this book in Galileo is one of those books in the series. They're all very good and very interesting. It was at a time in my life where I had a lot of time to read and I may do some reviews on some of those other books. But the one that really stands out in my memory is this book on Galileo. The author looks at both the historical record and different ways of interpreting the historical record. Even though Galileo lived a few hundred years ago, the world he lived in, the intellectual and social world he lived in, is very removed from the world that we are familiar with today. In many ways, Galileo is the unsung hero of the Western age. For he was the first one in over a millennia to champion the concept and the art of observation, of experimentation, observation, and then forming a plausible hypothesis or theory to explain the results. As remarkable as that may seem to us today, it was a scandalous assertion in his age. In the first chapter of the book, the author describes the intellectual and academic climate of the age in which Galileo was born. In the academies and the universities, the philosophy of Aristotle was paramount. And in fact, all knowledge was derived and thought to derive from Aristotle. Experimentation and observation were ridiculed for the main reason that they were considered imperfect. You could never get a perfect measurement of a single unit. There were always imperfections in real life. And yet all theory dealt with the perfect state of matter, the perfect state of being. And these errors seemed insurmountable and seemed to always invalidate in the minds of the philosophers experimentation and observation. So for over a thousand years in the academies and the few universities that existed in learned circles in the courts, this was the thought that prevailed. As remarkable as it seems today, no one thought to test the knowledge that was handed down to them based on their own personal experience. Even in the fields of medicine and the natural sciences. In chapter two, the author describes the early life of Galileo. He was born on February 15th, 1564, and his father was a musician. It described his life in his early years and his education. Now, apparently his father was also an amateur inventor of sorts and had championed the idea of observation and invention. In chapter three, the author very artfully describes some of the issues and some of the conflicts between Galileo's innovative thought and the traditional thought of the philosophers. He also very scholarly introduces how the church and the church hierarchy and politics is involved in this story. Now, Galileo's earliest work was involving gravity, 
and finding a gravitational constant. And we're all familiar with the story where he dropped something off of the Leaning Tower of Pisa and could establish that different objects of different sizes all fell at the same rate. This was in conflict with the prevailing philosophy of the time. The author also describes Galileo's personal life, his academic life, the difficulties he had in finding work and securing and maintaining work in the hierarchy of the times. There was lots of political favoritism and people that could play the political game were more successful. In 1609, Galileo became aware of an invention, the telescope. He heard about it and made a working model himself, reasoning it must be made of two lenses in a tube. And this started him in astronomical observation. And perhaps some of his most famous controversies of his life. Now, it's hard for us to imagine today because we're firmly educated in the concept of planets and moons and satellites and solar systems and galaxies and outer space, that that's what outer space looks like in our mind. But at the time of Galileo, no one thought of what we consider to be outer space to be constructed or organized in that manner. To most ordinary people, as best as we can tell, ordinary people of the civilized Western world, the sky was kind of a wonderment and a magical event. The philosophers thought it was some kind of series of concentric spheres and that all the stars and planets were perfect heavenly bodies. They were perfect spheres expressing mathematical perfection of divinity and on and on and on with endless and kind of ridiculous detail to even the most simplest mind today. And yet, for over a thousand years, this is what the prevailing thought was. And as far as we can tell, no one thought to question that. One of the early arguments that Galileo had that I thought was amusing, when he started looking at the moon, he said the moon is an object with mountains and craters on it. It has a surface, there's rocks and boulders. It's this big sphere that's illuminated by the sun. And it has surface texture. And he was thoroughly ridiculed or ostracized by the academia because they all knew the moon had to be perfect. It was perfectly smooth. And Galileo reasoned, if it was perfectly smooth, we couldn't see it because light would reflect off of it in a single point. And that is a very funny observation. And it shows you how smart Galileo really was. The reason the moon is illuminated is because it has a rough surface and we're seeing all the different parts being illuminated at the same time. That's why it was so enjoyable to me because the author describes the events and then puts the events in a sensible context. And that's difficult to do. Well, the final part of the book is the Inquisition and the issues of the Inquisition and the conflict of the Inquisition. And the result of that we're all familiar with is that Galileo was put under house arrest. The book is a fascinating read on a number of levels. The story of Galileo and the courage and honesty, the just outright honesty of Galileo. Not many people are courageous enough to be honest in the face of public opinion. It calls to mind the story by Hans Christian Andersen of the emperor's new clothes. And Galileo stands alone among all the learned scholars in Europe 
for nearly 1,500 years, or more like 2,000 years since the life of Aristotle, to say, hey, I have a different idea. Let's look at what's going on and try and describe that. To us today, that doesn't seem very remarkable, but it's one of the pillars that our entire base of knowledge and understanding of the world is based on. And Galileo is a great hero. So, if you're interested in history, you're interested in science and thought and philosophy, and you're interested in the story of an ordinary man who behaved courageously under extraordinary circumstances, then I, and you're interested in a well-written book, I highly recommend Galileo by Stillman Drake. Thank you, and leave your responses below.